بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين uh, First I should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the blessing of meeting again for our scientific discussion for muzakaratul ilm which is very important and I should also congratulate you for the, uh, the day of Eid al-Ghadir and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, giving us the blessing of being the people who believe in this day and in the significant role that this day has in the history of Islam in showing the path after the demise of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala الحمد لله الذي حدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن حدانا الله and I am also uh, sorry if uh, the change of the time caused disturbance in your program today uh, we have uh, many different uh, programs happening in this time in the community in the UK and today morning I had to drive to Birmingham and then uh, I had to come back, then I had a class, then I had a lecture for Ghadir. So I'm sorry for this change, uh, but uh, I appreciate that, Alhamdulillah, you have been able to uh, change your program and to be together now. Uh, inshallah, we pray to Allah to keep and preserve this blessing of uh, Kothar Learning Circle for all of us, because for me, and I hope you have the same feeling, this is a time that I am energized because of being connected to Mu'mineen to different parts of the world. Mu'mineen are valuable, but when you have a network of Mu'mineen, it's much more uh, valuable. So Alhamdulillah, through this uh, initiative, we are connected to Mu'mineen in different parts of the world, and I am very grateful to Allah for this. We go to the uh, book Munyatul Murid, and continue the prophetic hadith about uh, knowledge and its significance. The next hadith is Afdalu Sadaq, sorry, Ma Tasaddaq al Nas bi Sadaqatin Mithl Ilmin Yunshar. We have to give to others what we have and what we love. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحَبُّونَ It's impossible. You will never reach goodness and piety unless you give what you love, not just what you have. If you have something but you don't love it and you want to get rid of it and you give it to other people, this is not enough. Of course, this is also good that at least you share what you don't need with other people, but this is not making you a person who is virtuous, a person who is detached from dunya. If you want to be detached from dunya, you have to give what you love. I am not saying to give everything that you love, maybe you keep a part of it for yourself, but at least some of what you love, you have to give to others. But this can be money, this can be knowledge, a very important thing that you have learned, sometimes, you know, greediness comes and stops sharing this with other people. Say, I want to keep this for myself. I don't want to give this to other people. Especially, you know, some scholars who have a struggle to find, for example, some hadith, some scientific explanation, some very clear, you know, understanding that they have of a hadith or ayah that other people may not have had it so far. So greediness may come here, but virtuous ulama would say, no, we want to share with other people. So this 
prophetic hadith teaches us that uh, among different things that you can give as charity and share with other people is knowledge. So knowledge is also an item for sadaqa, for charity. But actually, the hadith says knowledge is the best thing that you can share with other people. So, ma tasaddaqa nasu bisadaqatin. People have never given any sadaqa like the knowledge which is shared, which is spread, yunsha. Mithla ilmin yunsha. Alhamdulillah, in large, the Muslim nation have been showing this. Whenever Muslims had some knowledge, whether it be religious or whether it be sciences, they shared it with everyone. When it comes to their understanding of philosophy, whether it comes to understanding of math, algebra, astronomy, medicine, you see Muslims published and shared with every part of one, Muslims and non-Muslims, their knowledge. They didn't hide it for themselves. They didn't keep it for themselves. They shared with everyone. Unfortunately, sometimes some nations or some parts of nations, they have this habit that when they know something, when they have some discovery, they keep it for themselves and they don't give you unless they charge you a lot. But we have to share with everyone who is needy. So if you are, for example, an expert in medicine and you have come with a treatment for cancer, you cannot keep it for yourself and let people die and say, you know, I am not going to share with this you and just this is for me or for my people. And if you want, you know, to learn, you have to pay me, you know, great amount of money. No, this should be shared with people so that the cost of treatment goes very down and all people who in need of treatment can be cured. This is Islamic understanding of knowledge. So, if you want to reach closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, share with people what you have and what you love. Be it money, be it time, be it some equipments, and be it knowledge. But know that the best thing that you can share is knowledge. The next hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, ما أهدى المرء المسلم إلى أخيه هدية أفضل من كلمة حكمة يزيده الله بها هدى ويرده عن ردا No Muslim has given a gift to his brother and it can be a sister, you know, a sister giving a gift to his, to her sister, a brother giving to his brother. Here, gender is not making difference. No Muslim has given any gift to his brother or her sister. Afwala, better than a word of wisdom by which Allah gives that person more guidance. And save that person from destruction. So if you share with people a word of wisdom. So that they can benefit in their life. They can be saved from going astray, being destroyed. This is the greatest gift that you have given them. It's more important than giving them a piece of clothes or money or car, jewelries, something that can give them wisdom. So, this is in the line of the previous hadith. The next hadith also is Afdalus Sadaqah and Ya'lam al Maru Ilman. The best sadaqah, the greatest act of charity, is that a person comes to know something, he learns something, then he teaches his brother or her sister. 
This is the best sadaqah. And you can also understand from this that when you share your knowledge with other people because of an act of charity, you should not charge them. Can you charge people for sadaqah? You say, you know, I give you bread or food or money and then you have to do something for me or you have to pay me. This is not charity if you expect something in return. Especially if it is a matter of uh, teaching them wajib, something which is obligatory. Our ulama normally have the fatwa that you cannot charge people. It's haram to charge people for teaching them wajibat. Because it's your own obligation. If it is not wajibat, it's still it's not good to charge people for what you teach. Yes, there are people who may have no job. They have dedicated their life to learning and teaching. They should not make payment condition for sharing the knowledge. But on the other hand, the people who learn from them or the people who are wealthy in the community, they should support them. But they should not say, I don't teach you unless you pay me. This is a condition. No. You share your knowledge with people, whether you have something to eat or not, whether you have a house or not, you share with people. You don't put any condition for teaching. You don't charge people for teaching. But inshallah, there are mu'mineen who would be understanding their responsibility towards the people who have dedicated their life to learning or teaching. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responsible for the rest of people, especially for learners. It is true that Allah has guaranteed the rest for every person, every even living being. But there are many hadiths in which we understand that Allah has a special support for the people who dedicate their life to learning. Maybe parts of the support comes through the causes and the links that Allah has put in this world. And one of them is the donations, the gifts, and different ways of community supporting people who learn and who teach and who write and do everything for the sake of sharing knowledge. So, as far as the person who is teaching is concerned, he should not expect any return, any charge, any even word of gratitude, although people should know the responsibility. So, this is sadaqah. This is the meaning of sadaqah. Sadaqah cannot be made conditional. Sadaqah cannot be given with expecting return. Abdalus sadaqah أن يعلم المرء علما ثم يعلمه أخاه. The best sadaqah is that the person learns something and then teaches his brother or her sister. The next hadith: العالم والمتعلم شريكان في الأجر ولا خير في سائر الناس. I wish everyone understood this hadith. I wish everyone remembered this hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says there are three types of people. Ulama those who have knowledge. Muta'allamun the learners and the rest of people. Those who have knowledge and those who learn, they are partners in reward. Alim receives reward and learner receives reward. I am not saying that reward is equal, but they both are rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alim is rewarded for learning and then sharing. The learner is rewarded for sharing so that inshallah in future he can benefit and other people can benefit. So learning and then inshallah acting and sharing, alim learning and acting and now sharing. So they will be rewarded inshallah. What about rest of people? Those who have not learned 
and I'm not learning, I'm not able therefore to share or teach, they don't do anything good in this regard. Rasulullah says, لا خير في سائر الناس. There is no good in the rest of people. This is similar to what Amir al-Mu'min said to Kumail that إنما الناس ثلاثة عالم رباني ومتعلم على سبيل نجاه وهمج رعا There are three groups of people علماء who are Rabbaniyun, Alimun Rabbani, a godly Alim. Second, Muta'allimun ala Sabil Naja, a learner who is on the path of salvation. So, not every Alim, Alim who is godly, not every Muta'allim, a Muta'allim who wants to benefit and act upon what he learns. He wants to save himself. And the rest of people are Hamadun Ra'a. Atba'u kull na'iq. There are people who have no principles in their life, no direction. They go after every call, after every, I don't know, invitation, every, you know, thing that happens, they go after it. Lam yalja'u ila ruknin wathiq. So, it's up to us to choose whether we want to be in the first category, alim, of course means alim rabbani, or muta'allim, which means muta'allimun ala sabila najah, or sa'irun nas, which is hamadun ra'a. I'm sure no one would want to be in the third group. But it's not just something that you can sort it out by not wanting. If you don't want to be ill, you have to work for your health. If you don't want to be ignorant, you have to learn. It cannot come you know, by itself. It needs hard work. It needs determination. It needs istiqan. Alhamdulillah, nowadays we have lots of opportunities for learning. Alhamdulillah. No time in history people had such opportunity for learning. Even in time of Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt, despite the presence of Imams and Rasulullah, no one had this much opportunity in all over the world. Maybe people in Medina had. But what about people even 100 kilometers away? There were many people who were just outside Medina and Mecca who had no knowledge. And these are called, you know, Arab, which means Bedouins. Just few kilometers away. Nowadays, wherever we are, in any part of the world, in any language you speak, you have access more or less to knowledge, to ulama, to lectures. Alhamdulillah, this is a great gift. So we have to appreciate. Otherwise, we would be included in the people that Rasulullah says, La khayra fi sa'ir nas and finally, the last hadith for today. Qalil al-ilm khayrun min kathir al-ibad. Little knowledge is better than plenty of ibadah, worship. Of course, this is the worship of people who have no knowledge. If, if it's alim and does ibadah, great value. But if it is a matter of either being alim or being a worshipper. If you are an alim and less worship, and you are not alim and more worship, which one is better? Certainly, to be alim with less worship is better than being jahil with more worship. This is not to discourage people to do ibadah. No, this is to encourage people to learn more. Because there is no doubt about the value of ibadah. But what is important is who is doing ibadah. With what kind of understanding he is doing ibadah. In, inshallah, lectures on akhlaq that inshallah we will start 
uh, sometime later in the Hose we have explained that in Islamic theory of ethics not only the action has to be good not only the intention has to be good but also the ma'rifah the knowledge and understanding of the agent is also very important it's not just enough to have good intention two people who have good intention and do the same act depending on their ma'rifah and level of understanding they would be rewarded totally differently to the extent that no more alim sleeping of alim can be better than worshiping of jahil so the value of ibadah is not underestimated but we have to know that with what understanding we do ibadah the value of understanding and il is very very high and if it is a matter of reducing your amount of ibadah but adding to your level of understanding the priority goes to the second to add to the level of understanding but if you can be an alim and do more ibadah of course that's the best okay i stop here we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah to include us among the true learners the people that would be doing their best for the sake of learning and they would not lose any opportunity for learning and for sharing inshallah wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad